Hello and welcome to another Python tutorial. So in today's video, we are going to kind of keep exploring the Win32Com library. Uh, in particular, we're going to be talking today about enumerations and constants. So this is something that I haven't really talked about in general at all because I wanted to kind of introduce some other topics first before we actually went into it. But um, for those of you who have, have, who have seen some of my earlier Python VBA videos, if you want to call it that kind of category, we always realized that uh, when we were doing certain types of uh, procedures inside of Python, so things like pasting, things like uh, you know setting borders and stuff like that, we always had to use the enumeration uh, style. So in other words, if we wanted to specify a certain type of border, we couldn't do it like we had normally done in Excel where we could say, hey, Excel edge bottom, which meant the bottom border. We had to know the enumeration for this particular constant that we could pass through into our method or property. And the same went with all the different methods and properties about Excel. So that was kind of one of the drawbacks about using Python was you kind of had to know all these enumerations behind the scenes uh, in order to use them. Well, I'm here to tell you today that technically we do not have to do this. Uh, we can do something that is very similar to this. So we can actually basically recreate the type of environment that we're used to seeing inside of VBA but now inside of Python, and we can avoid having to do the enumerations. Now, obviously, if you want to do the enumerations, it's totally okay. You'll get the same results, but I know for a lot of people, uh, especially when they're looking back at their code or they're um, you know, giving their code to somebody else or just for general readability purposes, it'd probably be a lot better to actually have the name of the constant, not just the enumeration of it. So with that being said, we're going to get our uh, video started. But that's basically what we're going to be covering today. We're going to see how we can now leverage the constants inside of the Python uh, module. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import our libraries, uh, you know, just like always. The first one will be our favorite one, win32com.client. And then again, I'm going to use an alias, so I'll call it win32. Uh, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an instance of the Excel app of the Excel app. And then from here, we'll create a new variable, Excel app, uh, win32, generate cache. So I want to use early binding. Uh, we do need to make sure we actually use early binding if we want to use um, constants, just as a FYI. But I'll go a little bit more in detail on that later. OK, so we'll do that. We want to make sure that we can see our app, so we'll set the visible property equal to true. And then from here, we'll just do a kind of one little extra thing. We'll add a workbook. So just because we have an application doesn't mean we have a workbook. We need to add a workbook. And so we're going to say, hey, create a new variable, call it workbook. That's going to be equal to the Excel app application. We'll go into the workbooks collection, and then we'll call the add method. And then again, just for purposes to kind of give us some feedback, we will display the workbook.name. And then also uh, we'll figure out what type of object this is. And so we'll say, hey, pass through the workbook. And then that's it for this little section. So let's run it. Okay, so we have another workbook. It's called book three. And it is a workbook object that belongs to, this is basically telling us that it's Excel. Um, but it's a workbook object. I'm going to close the other one, <clears throat> but it's this one right here. Now, the reason we're seeing it like this is because we are using early binding. So when we use early binding, we're basically telling Python what kind of objects we're working with, where with late binding, Python doesn't know any of that information up front. Uh, but this does come in handy because when we use early binding, a special type of library is kind of built for us in the background that contains all the information about this Excel application. More importantly, there is actually a nice little library that now contains all the constants that belong to this particular application. So what this means is going forward, if we've used early binding, that library now exists and we can access it. To access that library, I'm gonna insert a new cell below and then from here, we're going to import something else. We're going to import the win32com.client. 
but this one we're going to import constants and then we will use an alias we'll just call it c for short now the constants object is basically its own little object and one of the neat things about it is we can call the dictionary property that belongs to it and it will give us all the attributes about this object and so to kind of dis uh, show that to you guys i want to do an underscore dictionaries and then underscore if i do this dun, 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 what happened did I do something wrong? Oh, from, my bad. I'm sorry, it's from win32com client import constants as Cs. Okay, and so then we get this like big dictionary back, right? So here's our object. We're going into the dictionary uh, property about this particular object, and this has all the attributes about this object. Well, if you look right here, you can start seeing something. These are all the Excel constants. And more importantly, the key is the name of it, and then the value is simply the enumeration for that particular uh, constant. Now, if I wanted to access this entire dictionary, what I could do is I can go into my little list, because technically this is a list. Now, I'll explain why it's a list. It'll make a little bit more sense when we work with another application. But at this point, we can go into the first item, and then if I wanted to, just for demonstration purposes, what am I working with? What is the object that I'm now working with in this list? It's called a mapping proxy. That's just a fancy name for a dictionary at this point. So that's all we need to know. And then once I'm in here, I can call any of these type of objects by just simply passing through the key. So for example, if I want an Excel add, I, this will return the value that belongs to that particular key. It should be two which it is, so it is two. So the enumeration that belongs to this constant is two. Now, as nice as it might be to do this, this is kind of a little bit cumbersome. You know, we have to go into this object, we've got to call the dictionaries property, we have to go into the list, and then we have to pass through the key. That's a lot of work, I don't think we want to do that necessarily. So what we could always do at the end of the day, if we wanted to, we can always call the object and then we can just pass through the key that we want. And so in this case, we can call the Excel add and that will still deliver the actual enumeration for us. So at the end of the day, even though as a reader, as a user, we're seeing this constant, behind the scenes, really what Python is doing is it's just matching up that constant with the enumeration. So even when we're running our code, Behind the scenes, it's still going to be the actual enumeration style. So I kind of just want to let people know about that. Really, at the end of the day, we're just making this easier on ourselves to read, but it's still doing the old style that we were used to seeing. But I think it's important for people to understand that when we do an early binding with our application object, this little library is now made for us, and we can access this library and we can use it to our advantage, so now we can add some more readability functions to our actual code. So now that we understand that there's this library behind the scenes that contains all of our constants, let's actually leverage these constants in our code. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our workbook, we're gonna populate a range of cells, and then we're gonna add a, a border to it. You know, just a simple border, nothing fancy, but enough to demonstrate that we can do this. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get a work worksheet. And so what we can do is we can say worksheet, and that equals workbook. We're going to go into the worksheets collection. I'll pass through the key of the worksheet I want to work with. So in this case, it's simply sheet one. Now that I have that, I want to get a range of values. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, create a new variable, Excel range, set that equal to my worksheet object, go into my range property, and then we're going to select cells A1 to C10. And now that we have that, we will set the value of that range of cells. So we'll go into the value property and just set it equal to 1,000. So all those cells should now equal 1,000. Looks good to me. Looks like they're all equal to a thousand, so it's working just like we were expecting. And now what I wanna do is I wanna set the bottom section of this range 
I want to set the bottom section to have a border. And then that border, I also want to set it to be a red border. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's define our constants that we need in order to actually build our border. So we're going to say define our constants needed for the border. And so the first one will be the border type. At least I think this is the border type. So we'll go into our constant object and then I'll say, hey, I want the edge bottom constant. And so this is basically saying, hey, my border type is a bottom border. And then I want a border style, not border, border, border style. That again will equal my constant object. And then I say, hey, I want an Excel continuous. So these are the same exact constants that we're used to working with inside of VBA. We can find all the values for these on the MSDN website with the documentation. So it is available to us behind the scenes. Um, but for readability purposes, this I think is a lot better. Now, technically, if we wanted the enumeration for this, this one would be nine, and then this one would be one. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's set the border and make it red. Okay, and so we'll go into our Excel range object, we'll go into the borders object, and then we'll go border type. So that will be the type of border that we're working with, and I'll set the line style property equal to the border style. And then again, I'll go into my range object, I'll go into the borders property, specify the border type, um, and then we'll say, hey, set the color index equal to three. And three is just simply red. Now, technically I could write this a little bit differently. I don't have to write it just like this, but uh, for demonstration purposes, I really want you guys to get emphasizing. All we're doing is we're now just passing through the constant and we're setting it equal to it. Now, technically, if I wanted to, there's nothing stopping me from just simply replacing this line of code right over here, and that's it. And really, for this case, it doesn't matter. Now, for this one, because I'm using it multiple places, it probably makes more sense to put it into a variable that we can shorten up uh, and then just do things like that. So either way works fine. I'll leave it like this just so we can see it, but if we run it, Nothing happens on our end, but if we go back into the workbook, we can now see there is a red border at the bottom of our Excel range. So we were able to use the constants inside of Python. So very cool, I think that's neat. One final thing I do wanna mention before I kinda of go into the next example is I do want you to know, um, once you've used uh, early binding once you're good to go you can you don't have to use early binding later in the code or even in the next example you could do dynamic and that library the constant library is still there for you so don't feel like you're restrained to just doing early binding you can do late binding if you want because that library now exists um, I will tell you this I actually did want to let you guys know about something I did have an error this morning at work where when I was trying to do early binding, it said the module didn't exist or something like that. When that happens, what I found that works is I just delete the library that was created when I did early binding and it seems to work fine. So um, I'll show you kind of here because I had a, on the last video, I, I talked to you guys about that where it creates its own little library. Where is it? This one. So this little library right here, right? So this is related to my application object. If you get any errors there where it's saying, hey, it can't find anything, I just delete this one and then I'll run this line of code again and then it seems to fix all the errors. So uh, that's just kind of a note to you guys. If, it, if you run into that problem, it's there. Um, that is a possible solution. Okay, so now that I've talked about that, let's move on to the next example. Um, this is kind of more to drive home the actual working with the particular library. So this is more to drive home this concept because a lot of people ask me, why is it a list? That doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Like there's only one library there, you know, it doesn't really make sense to have a list. Well, this actually is interesting because right now there's only one item in there. There's only one library in there. You can technically have more than one library. And to kind of demonstrate that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an instance of the Word app but in this example, I'm gonna do early binding. Now, I've never done early binding with the actual Word application. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna go and create that library for me. 
And then it's also going to create the constant library that belongs to it as well. So it's kind of doing two different things at once. Now when I do this, I'll just put this down here. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so it came, went out, it made the library for me. In fact, if I go back to my folder, now I have the second folder that contains all the information about my Word application. So that's kind of neat. But the other cool thing is if I go here back to my constant dictionary object, this will be something that I think that's a little neat too. If I just remove this little section right here, I'll look at it and you say, okay, well that looks just kind of like what we were looking at before, right? Okay, that's nothing really exciting. But if you scroll down, if you scroll down and you know, you really, really scroll down, that was me trying to be funny. It didn't work. Ah, look at that. There's another library here. But this one is related to just the word ones. Okay. So when we use early binding, if we haven't used it before, it now adds all the constants to the constant library. So now if I want to access just say the Excel one, well the Excel one was the first one I created, so I would just say give me the first one. What if I want the Word one? That's technically the second one I created, so I would just pass through a one. And if I wanted to, I could also just call uh, the Word alerts all, so I'll just pass through the constant name, and then that returns the actual enumeration for it. So pretty cool. Um, I, I wanted to show that because I, I think behind the scenes, I think it's a good idea to understand really what's happening when we're running our code and you know why am I choosing early binding? Well, it's filling in this little dictionary for us. So we have to do that first. If we did late binding and we've never done early binding with our application, if we go here and you start trying to do constants, it's not gonna work because it doesn't know what it's looking for. So we have to be very uh, cognizant of that. We have to make sure that what we're passing through is making sense and that the library actually contains that information for us. Okay, so with that being said, I am gonna finish the video. If you have any questions about how to work with constants or if you just want a little bit more in-depth understanding about kind of the library that we're working with, uh, you know, please put them down in the comments below. Uh, I also didn't want to let you know, I did make a little Jupyter notebook for you guys. Uh, I will put it up to the GitHub, but this is just kind of going over what we did into the actual video, um, but just giving you some more background behind the scenes and then giving you some examples um, and, and things along that nature. I, again, I, I really want to make sure that you have reference material behind the scenes that you can leverage because I know when I was looking for this, I couldn't find anything on it. And so, uh, you know, if I do kind of the hard work behind the scenes, but you guys can benefit from it, hey, more power to you, right? So uh, thanks again for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.